Funny question from St. George, Utah. This from Mo. Pound for pound, who are the best five trainers in boxing today? One guy who jumps to mind who doesn't get enough credit is Tom Yankello, who's done a great job with Paul Spadafora down there in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Great trainer. I mean, he helped me win a world title. I had, I had the title for five years. And uh, he works with all the kids down there. He puts in all that hard work. And, and, and there, ain't no, there, ain't no doubt about, there ain't no doubt about it. He's one of the best trainers in the world. There's no doubt about that. Today's video, I'm going to show you how to incorporate several defenses into your shadow boxing. And I'm going to highlight blocking, rolling, using the shoulder roll, slipping, weaving, and pivoting. And I've done videos on these defenses. So if you wanted to go back and check out these vi those videos and be able to watch how I break, break down the footwork and really break down the defense. So I'm gonna give you a pattern today. And with that pattern, you wanna practice that pattern over and over and over again until you get it down. And then once you get the pattern down, you wanna use your imagination and just flow. And don't use the same sequence over and over again because you don't wanna be predictable in boxing. You wanna practice this to incorporate those defenses and work on the fundamentals of them, but then you want to break up that and change that sequence. So, and like in boxing, when you're throwing punches, you don't want to be predictable because you can be timed. And you could be timed so you can't land the punches. The guy can slip the punches because he knows they're coming. And then on the, on the other end, you can be countered. So you never want to be predictable. So this is a pattern to learn the fundamentals and to try to build that incorporation when you're, of your shadow boxing, of being creative. And then again, like I said, you want to use your imagination and break it up and flow with it. What we're going to start off today is I'm going to show you blocking first, okay? We're going to go with two blocks, okay? The first block, we're going to imagine that the guy is throwing a right hand at me, okay? I'm going to imagine the guy's throwing a right hand at me. So I'm going to go and I'm going to block it. Now the proper way to block that, like I said all the time, I always tell you, don't bring your hands way up, okay? Your elbows are in. What I want to do is I always want to make myself a smaller target. I want to make, you want to make yourself small in boxing. That's how you close openings, okay? So when I go to block that shot, my hands are here, okay? They're going to be underneath. They're going to be, you know, at cheek level or like I said, a little bit above shoulder level. And then when I, what I want to do is I want to, when I go to block, go down. Don't come up, go down. And that puts, gets your legs involved. Now you're going to be able to come back with a right hand with power and a left hook because you got your whole body, synchronizing your whole body into your block. So the block, you're going to block and your left eye is going to be down the inside of your hand. If you had gloves on, inside, inside the glove. When I, now that my next block, I'm going to block, I would be blocking a guy's hook. I'm going to take my chin away, one eye. I'm going to take my chin away from the oncoming hook my right eye is going to be on the inside of the glove, okay? So we're going to go block, 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 block. If we pick the hand up, it's just a little bit, but we're going down, so we're closing all of that. We're going to be able to protect this and our whole face, okay? And open the, even with gloves on, you want to open your hands to maximize the coverage, okay? So block, block. So I'm here, block, block. 
You see everything with your hands here. You don't hold your hands here. You have them here. Then you go down. Block, block. Okay? So that's the first, first two. Then the second two we're going to do off of that is roll, roll. So I'm block, block. The guy can throw another right hand at me. I can roll it. Shoulder roll, okay? And I talked about this before too. My hands are up. When I go to shoulder roll, it's like a door hinge. Door open, door closed. The door is closed. When I shoulder roll, the door hinge opens. And I open the door and I use my shoulder to block. Hands in here, okay? And what I'm doing is I'm making the guy extend. He thinks this is his range. And then when he throws the right hand, I make him extend the punch. So I can pull him into the counter right hand. Okay, so it's gonna be a roll and then another roll. When I roll, when I roll, okay, the door hinge comes back up. So I can roll with the shot and I can come back with a hook. And the hook's gonna be right here. It's not gonna be from here. When I throw the right hand, I'm not gonna throw the hook from here. So you're block, block, roll, roll. Then from there, okay, we're gonna work on slip, slip. But when I slip, I'm gonna make an angle. When I slip, I take my left foot to the left and up a little bit. Because why am I doing that? Because if I, in my imagination, the guy's throwing a right hand at me and I slip the right hand. When I slip the right hand, he could be coming back. What's natural when a guy throws a right hand? Throws a right hand, he's gonna come, a lot of times he's gonna come back with a hook, okay? So I'm doing two things. I'm gonna create an ankle to get away from the oncoming hook. That's number one. I'm stepping, stepping over and up. Okay, so now if, if, the, if the oncoming hook was coming, it would go behind me. I would, be, I would be on the inside of the hook, and I would be away from the hook. Because right here, the hook's coming, I'm here. When I step here, now the hook goes behind me, and I get on the inside, and then I'm going away from the hook by going to the left. So I'm doing two things. I'm going away from the hook, and I'm going on the inside of the hook. Okay, and I could come back with my own hook. When I slip, I'm going to step over and up, and my footwork's going to be left foot goes, right foot can turn to set my, myself up for a hook on the ball of my foot. Now, I don't have to do that though. That's if I want to come back and I get, I'm positioned now, like I said, I'm in the inside of his hook, I can really come back with my own hook and I can throw a lot more power. But if I don't want to, I can just step, 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 or I can step, step like that. I can step with, on the ball of my foot or I can step and just step, okay, step, step. And I could throw a hook right hand, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do off of that is a guy, let's say he doesn't throw the hook, just for drill purposes today. Maybe, maybe, he, maybe he threw the hook and then he come back with a jab, okay? Or he threw the right hand and then come back with a jab. Because I slipped the right hand, maybe he throws the right hand, comes back with the jab. So when he comes back with the jab, what I can do now from that position is I slip over, I take my right foot, Take my right foot first, and then my left foot first. Again, I create an angle. He threw the jab, he could be throwing the right hand. So what I'm doing is, he throws that jab, I slip that jab, here comes the right hand. I'm getting out of the pathway of that right hand, okay? But before he throws the right hand, what you're gonna do in this drill is maybe you slip it and you throw a right uppercut. You throw a right uppercut. So what we're looking at, let me go break it down again. So we're gonna go block, block, roll, roll, okay? Then from there, slip, slip okay I could throw a right uppercut like I said I could slip his jab and throw a right uppercut but we could just for drill purposes like I said we'll go back to block block roll roll slip slip we're making angles right now we're gonna weave weave angle I step up and over again over to the left now weave Step back over. Right foot goes first, left foot comes second. Okay? Then from there, pivot. Pivot. Okay? So the drill, the drill without any punches. Block, block, roll, roll, slip, slip, weave, weave, pivot, pivot. Right back on, trying to always keep your heel-toe stance to the your heel heel toe stance to the target. See? I'm heel toe. Okay? Block, block, again, like I said, I go down, not up. Down, block, block, shoulder roll, roll, hand comes back up in position to throw a hook. Slip, so I step up and over, slip, I step to the right, okay? 
And like I said, I could actually, when I step here, I'm stepping a little forward. When that jab comes, I could step just over to the side. But what I don't want to do when I step over to the side, like I got my stance here, right? I don't want to step like this. Now I'm squared up. Okay, I want to step here. And when I step here, I could step to the right and almost a hair backwards. Like I said, I'm getting my position that I can throw a right uppercut underneath his jab. Okay, then I'm going to step up and over again. When I weave, I'm going to come up. I can bring that foot, the ball of the foot if I want. Or I could just step over and step, step. Now when I move to the right, step, step. Now when I pivot, I rotate and I pivot to the target. I pivot this way to the target. So you're moving in boxing, so these, these angles are changing because you want to make an angle, a different angle to the target, or the guy's moving. So you're incorporating this drill, like I said, to, do, to develop all these moves. So I'm going to show you that without the punches again. We're looking at block, block, roll, roll, slip, slip, weave, weave, pivot, pivot. Okay, one more time. Watch my feet on the slips and the weaves and the pivots. I'm making angles, okay? So I'm looking at block, block, roll, roll, slip, slip, weave, weave, pivot, pivot, okay? So now we're going to incorporate punches with it. I could block, right hand, left hook, block, hook, right hand, shoulder roll, right hand, left hook, Roll, hook, right hand, hook. Maybe I come back with three that time. Being a little more creative, okay? Throws the right hand at me, slip. Hook to the body, hook to the head, right hand. I move my feet, I step up, over, up and over a little bit. It's a little bit of an angle. Get out of the way from the counter hook. Hook to the body, hook to the head. Right hand, slip, I step over again. Uppercut, hook. Underneath, hook, right hand. Underneath, weaving, right hand, hook. Pivot, hook, right hand, pivot, right hand, hook. Block, right hand, hook, block, hook, right hand, roll, right hand, hook, roll, hook, right hand, hook, slip, hook to the body, hook to the head, right hand, slip, right hand, hook, weave, hook, right hand, weave, right hand, hook. So going to the gym this week, practice that drill, get it down, watch the footwork, watch the fundamentals of it. Doesn't matter how long it takes, you can practice this drill for weeks. And once you get it down, all the footwork and the fundamentals, then you let your imagination flow and take it and just try to always do something different with it with those defenses all incorporated. If you watch when I'm shadow boxing, you can see how I start to change up. Sometimes I just slip without throwing a punch. Sometimes I slip and I throw a punch. So I'm constantly being unpredictable and I'm changing my movements. So nothing is a set pattern to be able to be timed or countered. Let me know how you liked the video. Comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.